This is chapter 6, lesson 3 on binomial and geometric random variables. Uh, we've already covered binomial, introduced it in class, so you'll get a sense of what that is um, hopefully through here. So as you go through this, think about what the difference between binomial random variable and geometric random variable is, and how each can be used to determine probabilities of different outcomes. So some applications would be for binomial, it's counting the number of successes in a fixed number of trials. So how many um, defective CDs and a shipment of 10, um, how small of a sample we can have and still be sure that it's accurate. Those are some different applications. Let's look at what we mean by a binomial random variable. So um, there's four conditions for um, the binomial setting or a binomial random variable. Um, remember bins. So BIN is the beginning, add an S to that, bi bin setting, binomial setting. Binary, bi meaning two possible outcomes, so either success or failure, and we, we would define what success is in the, in the certain scenario. Independent means one trial, the outcome of one shouldn't affect the, the an, another result of another trial. N, the number of trials should be fixed and advanced, and S, success, the probability P of successes must be the same on each trial. So check that before starting any calculation. Look back on our work from class if you're having trouble with that as we went over many examples. So if you're having trouble um, on the AP exam or on our final and you're not sure what concept's being covered, uh, check to see if it's a binomial setting. So check bins to see if it's binary, independent, number of trials is fixed, and the probability of success is equal because that often appears on the AP exam and will be on your final. Okay, so we count X successes in a binomial setting. We'll use a capital X. Uh, the probability distribution of that is a binomial distribution where N is the number of trials and P is the probability of success on each trial. Um, we'll go on to use K down here as the number of successes in N number of trials. So N, how many times? 10 free throws. We're looking for probability of making 6 out of 10. So 6 would be the number of successes, K. N would be 10. Let's say if you're a 70% shooter, then you'd have a 0.7 chance. P would be 0.7. Um, whole numbers, possible values of X would be whole numbers from 0 to N. So it's a discrete, meaning it's the number of successes, so you couldn't have half numbers. Um, this is the way, you've probably heard this as N choose K, or N choose R, N choose K. This is the way of seeing how many possible outcomes there are. For example, how many ways can we arrange two successes, two being k, out of five possible trials. And we apply this formula with the factorial. Remember factorial means the number times one minus the number times two minus the number and so on until you get to one. And we consider zero factorial equal to one. So five choose two here. And that would tell us the number of ways we can arrange two successes out of five trials. So the number of ways we could get two heads out of five trials. So there's heads, heads, and three tails heads, tails, heads, tails, tails, and so on. Rather than writing them all out, especially for more complicated concepts, this uh, formula gives us the result, the number of ways that that outcome, two successes, meaning two heads, could occur in five trials. So um, it's not related to the fraction five over two. It's a number of way of two successes out of five trials. So it could be, n sh um, could be k shots made out of n attempts. Uh, check over the page 338. 388, I'm sorry, and your calculator functions to see about how to do that on the calculator. Um, also, take a look at page 389 for the calculator function on binomial PDF and binomial CDF. So, binomial PDF lets us know the probability of k successes in n attempts. So that's if we want to know an exact number, like two successes out of five. So if we had f uh, five shots and you're a 70% shooter and we wanted to know the n probability of getting two out of five, we put in five for n. 0.7 if you're a 70% shooter, and then 2 for binomial PDF, and it'll give us the probability. Binomial CDF, very similar except for it will give us K or less. So if we want to know the probability of making uh, 4 or less, we could use free throws. We could do 5.74, and that'll, that'll add up the probabilities for 4, 3, 2, and 1. So different situations would require those. Sometimes this binomial CDF is very useful for the complement rule. Um, also, binomial PDF could be used for that, but if we wanted to know the number, the probability of having, making four or more, we could do put in three for the number of successes here, and then subtract whatever the probability we get is from one, since the only other outcomes that aren't three or less uh, successful shots would be four or five made shots. 
So if x has a binomial distribution in n trials and the probability is p, uh, possible values of x are 0, 1, 2, and so on to n, meaning you can't have more successes than total trials. So the probability that a certain number equals k here uh, would be, sorry about that, this should be x equals k. Uh, the probability that our value equals k, we do the number of possible combinations times 1 minus the probability of n minus k. So what this part of the formula refers to is the probability that the event happens, successes, and then this is the probability that the event doesn't happen. So in class we looked at um, rolling doubles and 1 6 was the probability of rolling doubles. So rolling doubles two times, we'd, this would be n choose k, so the number of ways of doing that so in this case there'd be six ways of having two doubles out of four trials the probability of doubles is one sixth we're looking for two successes so it'd be one sixth squared times the probability that it doesn't happen so five sixths of the time or one minus one sixth it doesn't occur and then this would represent n minus k represents the total number of trials minus the successes so this tells us the number of failures so think about this as branches on the tree diagram K represents the number of trials of success that you branch out on. N minus K represents the number of failures you'd branch out on. And then uh, this N choose K would tell us how many different outcomes on the right of our tree diagram correspond. So how many different outcomes correspond to two rolling two doubles out of four trials. So this is really the number of ways it can happen times the probability that the outcome happens. Uh, so these are helpful shortcuts. Uh, whenever you see an equal sign, the probability that x equals a value, use binomial PDF because it tells you the, uh, the probability that a value is equal to. If you see less than or equal to, use binomial CDF. If you see greater than or equal to, also use binomial CDF, but just remember that you're going to have to get an answer and subtract it from 1 because binomial CDF will tell us the probability that, um, that our number of successes equals a certain number or less. To find the mean of uh, standard deviation of a geometric, of a binomial random variable, sorry, you, you take the number of trials times the probability. So if there's a probability of 0.7 uh, shooter, 10, they're taking 10 free throw shots, 10 times 0.7, they're expected to make 7. Uh, the standard deviation is given by the square root of the number of trials times the probability times 1 minus the probability. And that gives us the standard deviation of the distribution. Uh, keep in mind which one of these formulas is given to you. So this is one that's given to you, and this is one that's given to you on your formula sheet. You have to know how to apply them, um, but you don't need to memorize them. Um, this is only for binomial distributions, not for anything other distributions. Um, a sampling without replacement condition. So if we're taking an SRS of size n, so small n represents the sample from a population of size n, capital N, the population, we can use this binomial distribution to model the count of successes as long as we don't sample more than a tenth of the population. So if we had a thousand people in the population, we could use a binomial condition distribution to model it as long as we don't have more than a hundred in our sample. Um, if we have too many from the sample, we can't use the binomial distribution because uh, independence breaks down of outcomes. Um, so keep that in mind. So for binomial distributions, we can't sample more than a tenth of the total population. Okay, whereas the binomial was the number of um, number of successes and a fixed number of trials, geometric random variable is when we want to count the number of trials till we get one success. So that's the main difference. We're counting the number of trials to get one success. Otherwise, they're very similar. So we're counting the number of trials for one success. So how many shots does somebody have to take to make one free throw? So for that reason, this, the requirements are very similar. We still have binary. Either ha Every trial has to be either a success or failure. The trials also must be independent. But instead of having a fixed number of trials, we're just counting the number of trials till the first success. This is the only difference. The T, bits, for a geometric setting, is what you have to remember to check. Success has to be, the, the probability has to be the same. So same as binary, except for now, instead of counting the number of successes in a fixed number of trials, we're counting the number of times it takes to get one success. So um, possible values of y are 1, 2, 3. You have to be whole numbers. It's discrete. It's the number of trials to one success. 
Um, page 400 has this for the, your calculator. It's also on your calculator function uh, handout that I gave you. So look at uh, page 400 on your calculator for help with geometric problems. And geometric PDF, geo PDF, and geo CDF work very much the same as uh, binomial PDF and binomial CDF, except for now it's only for a, a um, geometric variable. So the probability that y equals a certain number equals 1 minus the probability of the outcome times k minus 1 uh, times p, the probability that it does occur. To find the expected value or the mean of a geometric random variable, we just divide 1 over the probability of success. So that'll tell us the number of times we expect, the number of trials we would expect to have to have to get one success. So that's the main idea there. So for the multiple choice, please determine which of the following variables is geometric. Uh, remember bits and what those involve. Look back over the video or the outline in order to get a good sense of what we mean uh, by geometric. And then go on to the free response and look over the summary in your book as well as the examples and give a read over the lesson. And finally, answer the free response. Uh, if you'd like to keep this multiple choice up, please pause now.